our new chapter is societal impact societal impact means the in influence of information technology on society this influence can be both positive and negative technology affects the way individuals communicate learn and think information technology plays a central role in commerce industry government education entertainment and society it helps society and determines how people interact with each other on a daily basis technology plays an important role in society today it has a positive and negative effect on the world and it influences daily lives it also has problematic implications and some negative impacts on the society this chapter deals with ethical issues like personal privacy access right and harmful actions personal privacy means the privacy associated with the personal details that we share through the internet and access rights are the permissions an individual user or a computer application holds to read write modify delete or otherwise access a computer file and harmful actions include the cyber crimes we all should know how to protect yourself your sources or your friends what are the safe routes to take and how do you secure your personal data the first societal impact is digital footprints digital footprint means it is the term used to describe the trail traces or footprints that people leave online digital footprints are also termed as digital tattoos it includes the websites you visit emails you send information you submit to online services for example when you visit a website the web server may log your ip address which identifies your internet service provider and your approximate location when we go to beach then when we walk on the sand our footprints are created but these footprints is washed away by the water but the footprints created the digital footprints when created is not deleted it is stored permanently digital footprints are classified into active digital footprints and passive digital footprints active digital footprint is created when a user intentionally shares their personal information either through social media platforms or websites and apps examples of active digital footprints are sharing of personal information on social media platforms when we share our videos photos through instagram facebook or any other social media we are creating an active digital footprint and working with on online forms such as logging into facebook instagram gmail or filling any online forms 
creates a digital footprint or accidental or intentional acceptance to install cookies when our browser asks us to install it this also creates an active digital footprint now passive digital footprint a passive digital footprint is created when information is collected from the user without their knowledge for example the passive digital footprints are created when the websites that install cookies in the user's device without the user's knowledge apps and websites that use geolocation to detect the user's location also stores passive digital footprints and social media news channels and advertisements that use comments likes and shares of the user to know about their profiles and areas of interest based on these interest they serve the advertisements so these all creates a passive digital footprint next is measures to be adopted to manage digital footprints first one is enter the name into several search engines when we create any change or change our user names then we have to search that particular site through different search engines suppose we have changed the username in facebook then we have to search that facebook page through different search engines and check whether the old page is similar with the new page if it is not similar we have to contact the administrator next is double check privacy settings don't trust unsafe sites that is sites without http prefix privacy settings on social media allow us to control who sees our posts and social media streams next create strong memorable passwords we have to create passwords using a combination of words numbers symbols upper and lower case letters then keep all softwares up to date many viruses and malware programs may affect the system if our softwares are not up updated so we have to update the softwares that is to make all the softwares up to date older version of the softwares are more vulnerable to virus attacks review the mobile usage delete unwanted and obsolete files from your device set we have to either set the password or lock pattern on the mobile device and we have to delete all the unwanted softwares from the mobile and also check all the settings review all the settings of the mobile softwares build your reputation through behavior that is through social medias we should contribute only positive and professional behaviors we should share only positive post that can be seen by our boss our mates net and communication activities 
what is antiquity antiquity is the polite behavior of a person in a society then what is antiquity antiquity is the short form of internet antiquity or communication antiquities over the internet antiquity is a code of good behavior while working on the internet there are certain do's and don'ts while using the internet let us see what are the do's we should keep messages and post brief that is write a brief content a small content containing all the details then read your post or email to make sure they say what you are what you intended if you write a post read it again and again then remember that you leave a digital footprint so be careful what you write use discretions that is use language or words that in such a way that it does not create any community violence include a subject line in an email in an email there is a space for entering the subject then by viewing the subject itself the user can understand what is the content in the email then protect personal information be careful while sharing your personal information through the internet obey copyright laws we should obey all the copyright laws then stay focused and stick to the topic we should not deviate from the topic what we are posting on the internet then let us see what are the don'ts while using the internet post inflammatory or offensive comments we should not post any bad comments through the internet we should not write our comments or messages in full caps because it is considered as shouting on the net respond to internet trollers or personal attacks we should not respond to any internet troller or personal attacks we should just contact the cyber cell do no need of personally con con sending any personal messages to the internet trollers or personal attackers we should not post private or embracing images or comments we should not send any personal images or comments use sarcasm it might be misinterpreted we should not use any words that can be misunderstood which makes a person insulting violate copyright laws we should not violate any copyright laws we should make sure the work is our own or properly cited if you are using uh, any others work we should provide a citation that we are using somebody else work we should not exclude people or talk behind their backs we should not send spam messages unwanted messages mails to somebody else data protection what is data protection data protection is the process of safeguarding important information from corruption compromise or loss data protection addresses the practices safeguards and binding rules put in place to protect your personal information it ensures that it remains in control while working online that is our data remains in our control while working online there are certain issues that can happen to the data that we share online let us see what are the issues first is physical data loss there is a chance that 
the data is not no longer accessible in the storage media like hard disk or SD cards. Then attacks by malware like virus and worms. Virus and worms are malwares. Virus is a program that depends upon a host and worm is a standalone program. Next is targeted by hackers. Our data is always targeted by hackers. Then distributed denial of service attack. This attack is a malicious attempt to disrupt normal traffic of a targeted server. This attack makes us a website not available by continuously creating a traffic for that website and the users, normal users using the website will not be able to access that website. That is called distributed denial of service. Then loss of money through sharing online our banking details creates a threat to loss of money. Then intellectual property at risk. Intellectual properties are properties like patents, copyrights, trademarks, etc. We internet can cause threat to intellectual properties. So there are certain methods through which we can protect our data. Let us see what are the different methods. First one through data encryption. Data encryption is the method of converting our data into a unknown form into a particular code and that code can be transmitted so that any user in the middle in the network if accesses the data will get only the encrypted format and will not be able to read the content original data then the original data at the receiver end will be decrypted and obtained by the genuine user. Not sharing private information such as passwords, credit card credentials, etc. We should not share our passwords or credit card details through unknown or unsecure websites or unsecure medium. Not oversharing on social networking sites using public domains. We should not share large number of data through social networking sites. Adopting complete security mechanism for protection against possible threats. We should use antivirus or firewalls to provide complete security mechanisms. Avoid opening phishing emails. We should avoid opening emails from unknown sources or emails that can redirect us to a particular website. That website may resemble to us like a genuine website but may be a malicious website. May hack our personal details. So avoid opening phishing emails. Then be careful about using Wi-Fi connections. We should not use public Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi connections provided through railways, airports or bus stands. That should be avoided. Being alert to impersonators. Impersonators are those people. They pretend to be a person who are familiar to us. So be alert to impersonators. Intellectual property rights or IPR. 
intellectual property rights are the rights given to persons over the creation of their minds they usually give the creator an exclusive right over the use of his or her creation for a certain period of time intellectual property right refers to creations of the intellect hence the name intellectual property inventions literary and artistic works symbols names images and designs used in commerce are part of it you have seen the logos of different companies these are all part of intellectual properties these logos come under the trademarks and this intellectual property is classified into two industrial property and copyright industrial property protects inventions and copyright protects literary and artistic works you can see the copyright is given to the books written by certain authors and the trademarks for logos of different companies and patent is given for the inventions for a particular year or particular period of time a patent is granted for a particular invention let us see what are industrial property and copyright industrial property includes inventions for that patents trademarks industrial designs commercial names designations and geographic indications like location specific brands etc copyright includes literary and artistic works such as novels poems and plays films musical work artistic works such as drawings paintings photographs sculptures and architectural designs plagiarism is copying someone else's work and then passing it off as one's own copying programs written by other programmers and claiming them as your own could be an act of plagiarism it involves lying cheating theft and dishonesty you would have seen a film called udayanan taram in that srinivasan is copying a script written by stealing a script written by mohanlal and he claims that it is being written by him this act is called plagiarism stealing someone else work and pretending that it is his own work so plagiarism is classified into two types accidental or unintentional plagiarism or deliberate or intentional plagiarism accidental plagiarism means copying someone else work intentionally cutting and pasting blocks of text or any kind of data and publishing it on the web without the permission of the developer or the creator deliberate or intentional plagiarism involves careless paraphrasing quoting text excessively along with poor documentation how to avoid plagiarism to avoid plagiarism use your own words and ideas always provide reference to give credit to the source from where you have received your information if by any chance it becomes necessary to use someone's exact words don't forget to put them in quotes and give credit using in text citations if we are using writing a book or a report for our project then we we 
need to refer large number of textbooks related to that project in such cases we should use references and we should give citations for all the authors all the books that we have referred like this this is called citation as far as possible try to include the source in your books citing page number cite the name of the website a url or the name of the authors and acknowledge them if you have used their work after rearranging the order of a sentence and changing some of the words if we have used somebody else work create a citation like that and if you have copied a content from a website specify the url of that website in the reference take information in the form of bulleted notes in your own words rather than copying the entire content or complete sentence if you copy the complete sentence then replace the words in that with similar meaning words then it will also avoid plagiarism and use online tools to check for plagiarism there are large number of tools to check the plagiarism if you copy the content from a website then put it in the plagiarism checker and it will find out from which website you have copied so if you change the words in the document with similar words similar meaning words then the plagiarism checker will not be able to detect the presence of a plagiarism